Although he was never critically acclaimed commercially, he was always edgy, bold, and doing something different, just like his friend David Bowie. It would actually be Bowie that pulled him out of his lowest point and helped him achieve some of his biggest moments of his career. So let's get into the story. Now Iggy Pop was born in 1947 as James Newell Osterberg Jr. and grew up in a trailer park outside of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Even though both of his parents were college educated, it was for no reason other than his dad thought it was a great way to live. He had a fairly clean cut upbringing, think loafers and polo shirts, and it's rumored that he didn't lose his virginity until the age of 20. Now Iggy started his rise to fame as a member of the Stooges, also known as Iggy and the Stooges, and the band came together in 1967 in Ann Arbor with original members Ron Ashton on guitar, Scott Ashton on drums, and David Alexander on bass, as well as Iggy Pop on lead vocals. Now, the Stooges are considered one of the first punk bands and marked a big disruption in the otherwise psychedelic and poppy music that was popular at the time. Now Iggy actually started out in music as a drummer, first picking up drums at the age of 15. He stepped out from behind the kit to become the band's frontman, much like one of his idols Lou Reed of the Velvet Underground had done. He started using drugs at this time, in particular acid, which was supplied by friend Ron Ashton, who was working at the University of Michigan doing research on psychedelic drugs before they became illegal, and later moved on to coke, considered a soft drug at the time, as well as smack and pills. Now he avoided being drafted into the Vietnam War by quote, appearing deranged at his draft interview, as he told in a 2019 interview with the New Yorker Online. Now Bowie first met Pop in 1971 at the legendary venue Max's Kansas City, and Bowie had said that Iggy was an inspiration for his Ziggy Stardust persona. Now Bowie was on the verge of superstardom with 1972's The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust about to be released. Now the Stooges would break up later that year due to the increasing use of hard drugs. Iggy got sober and thanks to David Bowie's suggestion that the band got back together a few years later and created their most famous album 1973's Raw Power. Now unfortunately Iggy's sobriety didn't last and by 1974 he was addicted to drugs once again and by 1975 he was homeless. He hit bottom when he woke up puking bile in an abandoned building. Iggy checked himself into a neuropsychiatric center in Los Angeles, and David Bowie is one of his regular visitors. And when he was released, he took Pop on the road with him as a friend and not a performer for his 1976 Station to Station tour. It would actually be Bowie that launched Pop's solo career, and after Bowie's Station to Station tour ended, Bowie got Pop signed to RCA Records and Bowie was increasingly interested in European electronic rock at this time and used the opportunity to collaborate with him on two albums to experiment with new sounds. Now, since Bowie was already such a big star in the mid-70s, he was a bit limited in how much he could experiment with his sound, so Iggy was a catalyst to explore new styles of music. And the two worked together on Pop's first solo album, The Idiot, which was recorded in West Berlin and Musicland Studios in Munich. It would be released in March of 1977. Now Bowie and Pop moved to West Berlin for three years starting in 1976 and their apartment was over the top of an auto repair shop. And Iggy's second solo album Lust for Life was released in August of 1977 and was recorded at West Berlin's Hansa studio by The Wall. Now this would be a great time of creativity for both artists and during this period Bowie also produced his legendary Berlin trilogy starting with 1977's Low followed by 1977's Heroes and 1979's Lodger. Now Bowie even played keyboard for Iggy Pop on his 29 date The Idiot World Tour in 1977 which touched down in the US, Canada and the UK. And later on in 1983 Bowie would release a single China Girl which was originally recorded for Pop's 1977 album The Idiot and was part of Bowie's 83 album Let's Dance. Now not even Bowie could snap Pop out of his self-destructive tendencies though. Although he's still alive today he would succumb to addiction once again for their time together in Berlin and would later lose touch. Pop has nothing but good things to say about Bowie, although he was definitely aware of the skewed power dynamic between the two of them. And in a 2016 New York Times online interview with John Perales, Pop says, the friendship was basically that the guy salvaged me from the certain professional and maybe personal annihilation, simple as that. He resurrected me. He was more of a benefactor than a friend in a way most people think of friendship. He went a bit out of his way to bestow some good karma on me. Now, it would be nearly 25 years until Pop enjoyed some commercial success with the first album to be certified gold in 1990's Brick by Brick and the top 20 single Candy. 
Now in the early 90s, Few Stooges tracks were covered by bands like Guns N' Roses, R.E.M. and Slayer, and the song Lust for Life got a resurgence when it was featured in the 1996 movie Train Spotting. Now Iggy has recorded a total of 18 solo albums and he's still alive today, living with his girlfriend in Coconut Grove, Florida, and has been clean for over 35 years. There's a famous photo of Bowie, Lou Reed and Iggy Pop at the Dorchester Hotel in London. In a 29 interview with The New Yorker, he talked about being the last of the three who were alive. I had crashed that party innocently and there I was so uncool I was grinning, Pop would say. You have the two pillars of the alt industry there and in the middle you have this sort of shaky proposition he would remember. Now in my humble opinion, that shaky proposition has been nothing short of an innovator and a survivor, and you have to give Iggy credit for that. And in 2010, the Stooges would be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and his bandmates Scott and Ron both died of heart attacks in 2013 and 2009, respectively, and Dave Alexander passed away many years earlier in 1975 by alcoholism. Now David Bowie would pass away in 2016 from liver cancer, and upon his passing, fans in Berlin left flowers at the site of the apartment they'd shared in the 70s. Despite the extensive catalogue of music that they produced, retiring isn't on Pop's radar. In a 2019 interview with The New Yorker, he said, I always wonder if I stop doing music, would I start drinking tea instead of coffee and, you know, brush my teeth more and all that? Or would I become like an alcoholic depressive, he'd say. So there you have it. I want to know in the comments, guys, what do you think of Bowie and Pop's friendship? And do you have a favorite album from the Berlin years? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, we're doing a crowdsourced listening party for our patrons on Friday, April 3rd. If you guys want in, sign up to the link in the description box as the group your band member tier. And remember guys, bands may break up, legends may die, but music lives on. Take care.